Okay, so let's um, sort of misuse FM8 and let's see if we can create a nice big uh, pad sound with a sort of a, like an analog character to it by using additive synthesis. So we're just adding uh, operators or oscillators together. Um, we're going to look to maybe pitch them slightly away from one another so we get that nice thick sound. Um, and we are then going to feed everything through the filter, which you can see is operator Z. So on some, well, classically, going back to the DX7, if you didn't have a, a, a dedicated filter, you would make the sound brighter and, and duller or darker um, just using carriers and modulators, which we're, we're going to come to in a little bit. But on FMA, you get a dedicated filter operator, which is very handy. Um, so yeah, let's just say activate. Why not? Let's go for all of them. Let's make a huge pad sound. Okay, um, so I'm going to turn that off. And in fact, we just need to activate Z as well, just by right clicking. Um, and let's just turn the cut off all the way up as it stands. So what we need to do, rather than send the operators directly to the main output here, we're going to first of all send them to the filter and then the filter is going to be the main output. So if I just click and drag there, you can see the filters going to the main output. The filter doesn't make any sound on its own. Um, and I need to feed this into Z and, and every subsequent uh, oscillator or operator into Z. So you see it's called a matrix because you can feed anything into anything. So click and drag this block here. And there we go, we've, we've sort of uh, got the sine wave sound that we started with. Okay, so operator F, let's go for a sawtooth. Next up, operator E, let's go for another sawtooth. And you can see they're both uh, perfectly tuned to the same pitch as it stands, uh, and therefore you won't really hear that there's uh, two operators playing simultaneously, save for that sort of slight phasing effect. So what we can do, this offset in Hertz is, I suppose, the equivalent of, well, either a coarse or fine tune. So if we just Maybe do something like that. You see we start to get that nice big sound. Um, now this lower section, if this is the main output, this lower section allows you to pan operators by clicking and dragging. So because these are sort of playing roughly the same pitch, let's just add a bit of width. There we go. Okay, um, so let's add D into the mix. Um, D, let's actually pitch that down by an octave. So we need to take this down to 0.5. And because that's going to be my my bass note in my big pad, so that you know the lowest note, I'm going to just leave that panned centrally. And yeah, let's add C. B and C into the mix. Maybe pull that down a little bit so it's not quite as bassy. Um, we'll pan these a little bit further away. We will go up to the next octave for B and C. So let's go number two. Number two and. Um, Let's go for something slightly different. Let's go for a soft square, maybe. Oh no, let's uh, let's go for a regular, regular square. And let's just move those away maybe a little bit more. So 
just need to watch my main output there. So maybe just pull that down a little bit. So there's a little bit of resonance on the filter which I've just taken off. What we could do actually, just to sort of dusty that up a little bit, you see X is an, uh, a noise operator. Um, so let's just add that into the mix. Not too much, so we'll just pull that back. Okay, um, so we've got the basis of our pad sound. Um, but as you can hear, the envelope is fairly short and sharp. So this is where we go to the env section. And we've got the envelopes for each operator. So if I were to click on B, in fact, if I, if I click on B, it takes you to all the settings um, for the B operator and likewise C you can see you've got your ratio, your offset, the waveform type, uh, your envelope, what have you. Um, if I go to env, because I want to treat all of the operators as, if, uh, you know, as, as one big sound, uh, what I can do is Click this button here to, to link all the envelopes. Uh, the only one I don't want to link is, is Z because we might look at doing something different with a, a filter envelope. Um, but what we can do now is we can start to play around and you see all the operator envelopes uh, are following suit. Now I've got a, a range of envelopes to pick from here as well. I mean, you can just start to see the, the, the scope of the sound shaping possibilities of, of FM8 um, are absolutely huge. But if we just go for standard ADSR, you see it sort of gives you the, the various uh, stages of an ADSR envelope. We can affect things like, you know, the gradient of the attack, which is quite useful, and the decay and so on and so forth. So we want something that's fairly smooth as it comes in. And then when I take my finger off the note, something that's got just a little bit more length in it. Now if I click and pull vertically here I can zoom in and out you see you get <laughs> potentially really long release time. I mean that's about five seconds you can see the scale goes pretty huge. Um, so I'm just clicking and dragging to zoom in here. Okay, so I'm I'm sort of happy with that. Um, so that's the volume, the amplitude envelope of, of each of the operators set. So just have a look at the spectral analyzer and the, the waveform. You can see it's quite quite interesting and as we move any of these you can see and we can change the timbre quite a lot just by affecting the balance of uh, of, of the level of, of each operator Okay, um, now let's 
just visit the effects section. So if you just click here, you can see you've got loads of different built-in effects uh, just to add a bit of flavor to the sound. Um, so we might try maybe a bit of chorus, just to thicken the sound up a little bit. And we've got this really nice sort of uh, epic sounding reverb. We just pull the, uh, let's just go back to our envelopes. Let's just bring that release time back a little bit, just for the time being. So we can sort of hear that, that nice reverb. And there may be a little bit of delay, um, so let's just sync that up to the tempo. Just pull the feedback back a little bit, dry wet, more the dry signal. And what you've got there is quite a nice old school sounding stringy paddy type. Uh, yes, yeah, it's quite an analog sound. Um, so that's just one of the Tombra's textures that, that FM8 is capable of. 